Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Wednesday, September the 5th, around 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, we are approaching the peak of the 2018 Atlanta hurricane season, and it's been busy, and unfortunately, it's going to get even busier over the next one to two weeks. I do want to mention we have a couple of uh, systems out in the eastern Pacific. We have Hurricane Norman and Hurricane Olivia. Those two storms will not pose a threat to Hawaii or any other land masses. But over here in the Atlantic Basin, unfortunately, next week we could have two uh, landfalling systems potentially. This video today, we're going to focus on Hurricane Florence. But I do want to mention that Gordon uh, made landfall last night along the northern Gulf Coast as a 70 mile per hour tropical storm and has moved inland and has begun to weaken into a tropical depression today and will continue to dump heavy rains over portions of the southern United States. And then we have Invest 92L, which is a strong tropical wave that has moved off the coast of Africa. This system is poised to become Tropical Storm or even Hurricane Helene over the next several days as it tracks west to west-northwest, generally towards the Caribbean. Uh, this storm is a long ways out from affecting any land, uh, so we will have a, a further updates on this system as we get closer in time. But again, today we're going to focus on Hurricane Florence as it has become the first major hurricane of the uh, Atlantic season. You can see on the satellite image, uh, Florence has a well-defined um, eye. It also has well-defined upper outflow uh, in the upper levels. So this is a classic looking hurricane despite the wind shear it has been facing. And you can see over here on the National Hurricane Center five-day forecast track, Florence is forecasted to remain a major hurricane uh, for at least the next 24 to 40 hour, 48 hours and then begin the weekend, although it will still be a hurricane, it will be encountering some more unfavorable conditions as it generally tracks towards the west and west-northwest towards Bermuda. And if you've been following the progress of the storm, you have uh, likely heard that the latest computer models have begun shifting uh, more towards the west and uh, favor less of a recurve out into the north open Atlantic. So... That's something we will be talking about a little bit later on here in this video. But here's the current wind shear that um, Florence is facing. It's kind of remarkable that this storm was able to intensify so quickly uh, into a major Category 3 hurricane. Just for your reference, here's Puerto Rico over here. Here's the Lesser Antilles. And here is Hurricane Florence right here. And you can see uh, the red lines here indicate uh 30 to about 45 knots of wind shear above the storm coming out of the southwest. Uh, so again, uh, it's pretty remarkable that this system has been able to intensify. You know, we would expect that if the storm was located down here around this green area, uh, which would be very favorable conditions, you know, areas of light wind shear in the 5 to, you know, 15 mile per hour range. But, uh, and as the system moves more towards the northwest, it's going to be uh, still battling increasing wind shear. So, We'll definitely be watching the uh, future forecast over the next few days very closely as the intensity of Florence could likely uh, possibly determine the final track of the storm in the long term. Here's the uh, southern air, uh, excuse me, the, the dust layer that you know, we talk about and you hear about the, all the African dust that comes off the coast of Africa uh, you know, in, the, in this fashion from northeast to southwest. And you know, in June and July, it's pretty typical to have a lot of this dust out here, but you can see um, Florence is located in a pretty favorable area. There's a little bit of dry air and dust around it, but nothing really to hinder, uh, like I said, nothing that hindered it becoming a hurricane. Then over here we have Invest 92L, which this storm is likely to become Helene as it tracks a more of a southerly route than Florence did, you know, generally off towards the west or the west-northwest over the next five days. Okay, so the long-range forecast track of uh, Florence uh, is, is still, in, it's, it's still uh, not set in stone, but we do want to kind of talk about some of the steering features at play and kind of go over that. So I'm, I pull these model images off the GFS model from uh, this afternoon. It just ran within the last couple of hours. So you can see here at hour 66, which would be this weekend on Saturday, it has Florence located here in the... Um, Central Atlantic and this map I'm showing you is the height anomaly so it kind of shows a good representation of high pressure and low pressure which are the main driving forces 
for tropical storms. Wherever you see the, the orange shading indicates areas of high pressure and areas of blue indicate uh, lower pressures in the atmosphere. So uh, we want to take a look at the GFS model for uh, hour 66 uh, this you know coming Saturday morning. You see Florence here and you see there's a ridge of high pressure that's located uh, to the north and northeast of the storm and this is what's been helping push uh, Florence towards the west northwest and you also can see there's an incoming trough of low pressure digging down from the north here helping to help you know possibly weaken this high pressure area just a little bit uh, so let's move on to the next slide here which will be hour 102 and you can see that this ridge of high pressure has begun to weaken a little bit and move off to the east and you have this area of low pressure that is digging a little further south into the central Atlantic closer to um, Hurricane Helene. Now hurricanes typically will will move towards areas of low pressure. What I mean by that, if this if Florence can get close enough to this trough, it'll help turn the storm more towards the north and northeast, and then Florence could escape quickly out into the open Atlantic. But looking at the latest models, they are beginning to show more separation between Florence and this trough in the medium to long term uh, of the model runs. So I'm going to move forward to the next slide here, which is hour 156, which would be about a week from today. And you can see the big change between uh, this slide and the previous slide is we have lots more high pressure ridging to the north and to the east of the storm. And the trough of low pressure that you saw up here has moved out and Florence missed the connection with that trough and was not able to turn out into the open Atlantic. So whenever a storm gets underneath a ridge of high pressure like this, the counterclockwise flow will help push the storm more towards the west. So over the last uh, couple sets of model runs, the models, including the European, the GFS, the British UK MET model, and a, a, many of their ensembles have been showing a trend towards more high pressure out here over the open Atlantic and less of this, less of low pressure. And whenever you see high pressure ridge, ridge building, that increases the likelihood of impacts or a potential landfall along the U eastern United States seaboard or even Bermuda, which you can show the GFS gets um, Florence pretty close to Bermuda. So. Again, this is still a week away. This could still change easily to uh, the models could f could trend more towards lower pressures, which could help steer Florence away from any land. But right now, this is the current trend, and that's something we want to look for this far out is trends, not really specific model runs. Um, so it's definitely a concerning trend today, and we'll, we'll continue to, the mo to monitor this over the next several days to see if this becomes... Um, you know, the most likely scenario for Florence in the long term. Here at the Hurricane Tracker app, we have a unique product that is only issued within the app. It's called our Long Range Impact Chance. So it shows you, based on the latest trends, based on all the data that we compile and look at, you know, what is, how can we put that into a relative number or percentage? And right now, we're showing about a 45% chance that Bermuda could be impacted uh, by Florence within the next 10 days. Over here along the eastern United States seaboard, we begin along the east central Florida coast with a 5% chance of impact. And then as you go further up the coast into the mid-Atlantic, we do have increasing chances because that's where a lot of the models at this time and a lot of the data suggests Florence could go in the long term. And even up in New England and the Canadian Maritimes, we cannot yet rule out any risk of impacts. Now, for the Gulf Coast, those of you in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Western Florida, you know, less than 1% chance right now. We haven't really seen any indication that the system could turn far enough south to get into the Gulf. Um, very low chances of that. So, right now, we say there's about a 3 out of 10 chance that this system could impact the United States. A lot of that has to do with we're still a week out. The models can still change and almost a 50-50 chance of impacts in Bermuda. So definitely this is something we're going to be uh, focusing on very sharply over the next several days. And again, we could have Florence potentially impacting Bermuda or any portion of the United States, e United States East Coast next week. And at the same time, we could have uh, the next storm, tropical storm of Hurricane Helene, potentially impacting 
portions of the Eastern Caribbean. So lots going on. It's not going to slow down anytime soon. We have several more waves, unfortunately, lined up to move off the to move off the coast of Africa, and uh, we're going to be very busy over the next several weeks before things really start to slow down. And unfortunately, it looks like there's some increasing potential of some land areas being impacted by at least one, maybe two tropical systems next week. Thank you for using the Hurricane Tracker app. If you don't have a tracking app and you want to track all this activity, for just $4, you can download the Hurricane Tracker app. Just search uh, Hurricane Tracker in your app store, Google or Apple. Look for the blue hurricane icon. Or you can go to www.hurtracker.com, H-U-R-R tracker.com. It's a one-time fee. We have lots of analysis, maps, advisories, all the official data, our long-range impact map to keep you updated and ahead of these tropical systems. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a good day. We'll have another video update as conditions warrant.